Hi everyone, thank you for joining this session. I'm very happy to be here in person in London and seeing everyone in, you know, live 3D, like everyone mentioned. And uh, so this is really great, uh, open source finance forum, I think it's very important. And I'm, I'm here to talk about one of my favorite topics, the challenges of deploying real-time AI for finance and how open source software and tools uh, can help. And I'll be s focusing specifically on feature stores. So I'm uh, Nava Levy. I'm uh, an, an AI dev advocate at Redis. Um, Redis is the super fast uh, open source uh, um, real-time database used for uh, real-time applications and use cases and uh, we are the home of the open source Redis as well as Redis stack and Redis enterprise which extends Redis to you know enterprise tiers and capabilities and I'll talk a little bit about that as well. So uh, we'll start off by uh, the challenges of deploying real-time AI for finance uh, what are machine learning operations and specifically what are feature stores and for real-time AI? And uh, towards the end, I'll go through a few case studies specifically in, in fintech, in finance and banks uh, using open source uh, tools to deploy real-time AI and as well as how to get started with two great open source feature stores, uh, Fist and Feather. Uh, with Redis as the online feature store. And I'll explain what is online feature store and what are feature stores, uh, etc. Okay, so I think the good news is that uh, the adoption of AI in finance is, you know, is growing. And this is uh, from a study by KPMG that shows that uh, year over year there was a 37 percent point increase for adoption of AI in finance. And this is much more, for instance, if we compare it to the tech sector, which only had a 20 percent point increase year over year. So it shows that, um, that really uh, uh, finance are you know, uh, get, getting excited about the value of AI and machine learning. And uh, when we look at um, you know, the use cases that, uh, that, that uh, banks and, and financial services companies are deploying, then they, we can see, you know, uh, use cases that are more specific to the finance domain, like fraud detection and loan approval and anti-money laundering. And, uh, uh, but we can also see more generic application to use cases, like chatbots and recommendation and lead scoring, which is important for any uh, business that is involved in digital transformation. And all of this is really driven by digital transformation, by disruption from digital natives, by uh, the low interest rates, by the threats coming from uh, cyber criminals who themselves are using AI and machine learning, and ultimately the need to improve customer experience, and uh, uh, while not, not, not uh, uh, you know, keep, keeping the cost low, at least doing it uh, cost effectively. And over time we see that you, those use cases are becoming real time. And that means uh, that uh, they have to be uh, deployed in a way that uh, the response is instant without the customer even being aware that there is a machine learning engine running in the background, okay? Uh, and deploying these machine learning uh, use cases uh, to production is very hard and complex. Doing it for real-time use cases is even harder. And this is why we see that most models, machine learning models, never make it to production. And some that do make it to production after a while, they crash and burn because of all kinds of issues. And this led to the development of the domain that is called machine learning operations or platforms, MLOps platforms, that basically bridge the gap between what a data scientist develops on his Jupyter notebook, okay, the experiments that he creates, uh, between what it takes to deliver a, a system, an AI-based system to production. And there is a huge difference, okay? And the, on the, the heart of these uh, machine learning operations platform or the cornerstones are what is called feature stores, okay? So it's a component that uh, is becoming more and more important. And I'll explain wh uh, what, what they are in, uh, in, in a little while. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to be focusing uh, on two open source uh, feature stores or more likely two open source feature stores, Fist and Feather, and Redis as the online feature store. And the online feature store, as you will see, is the critical component for delivering real-time AI. Okay, the feature store is very important 
for a lot of things and we will uh, cover them, but the, the most important uh, uh, component for real-time AI is the, the online feature store, which is, you can see in both of them, is uh, with Redis. Now, um, the, the, the Feather uh, feature store is, uh, is a feature store that came from LinkedIn just a few months ago. LinkedIn decided to open source the battle-tested uh, feature store after many years, and, uh, you know, it's for us to use it. And, and Gojek, already in the beginning of 2019, decided to open source their feature store. Uh, LinkedIn did it with the collaboration of Azure and Gojek with, with the collaboration of Google. And, and we have Fist uh, to use, and this, this is the most popular open source uh, feature store today, Fist. Um, and it's interesting because I, I don't know how many are familiar with Gojek. LinkedIn, I assume all of you are familiar with, but Gojek is like the Indonesian uh, Uber. Okay, it's, it's, uh, I saw a market cap from a year ago of uh, $10 billion uh, market cap, so it's a huge company. But back in January 2019, it was, more, it was a much smaller uh, company, as you can imagine. And uh, then it used the Redis open source. Uh, but only recently, they, uh, due to the scale that they have to operate, you know, managing the scale, and man managing it cost effectively, they decided that they need, you know, they outgrown the Redis open source and they, they need Redis Enterprise, okay? And this is that just to get a, a some, somebody asked me, does Redis uh, open source can comply with enterprise uh, capabilities? Yes, with Redis Enterprise we can and, and uh, it's, a, it's a, um, the finance vertical and telco and government and healthcare are uh, you know, some of the biggest uh, vertical industries for Redis Enterprise, specifically because of those uh, reasons. And uh, when, we, when we look at, those, at uh, you know, those, those architectures, you can see lots of logos, and a lot of them are open source software and tool, right? Uh, but uh, this is really just a fraction, a very, very small fraction of the open source tools out there that exist for machine learning and AI. And when we look at them, it, they cover every category and every, every stage of the life cycle of machine learning project from data management uh, to uh, training the model to deploying the model to monitoring the model, ma ma maintaining the model uh, uh, and, all, and uh, uh, really every aspect of it. And this is also just a small fraction. There are thousands of such open source uh, software and tools. And of course, not all open source software and tools are alike. So it's important to make sure, you know, what is the popularity of the, of the tool? Uh, does it have enterprise support? Um, and, and many other aspects. Uh, but when we look at, um, at open source uh, software for machine learning and AI, we see that for every category, if you look which, which is the leader, which is the best of breed for every category, most of the time it will be an open source tool. So basically, we won't have seen the innovation that we see today in machine learning and AI without open source. Okay, the researchers, uh, companies wouldn't have been able to, to, to reach, you know, the amazing uh, breakthroughs that they have, uh, uh, you know, that were done and the value uh, to, uh, without uh, open source software and tools. And as I said, we're going to focus on Fist, Redis, and, and Feather. And you can see the cards here uh, of each of them. Uh, it's, uh, I just want to mention that Fist is also a Linux Foundation project. It's a sp specifically a Linux Foundation AI and Data uh, Foundation uh, project. Now, uh, when we look, uh, what, what problem, what, what problem or challenges do feature store address? Okay, so what they address is the most uh, difficult problem or the, the most time consuming problem uh, that data scientists have to tackle with and it is the data management. Okay, according to many surveys, uh, more, more than 50% of the time that a data scientist spends is about data management. It's cleaning the data, it's transforming the data, it's feature engineering, okay? And, uh, and, and this is something that, you know, this is, you can see here 66 percent. I've, I've heard the number 80 percent thrown around. It doesn't matter. It's more than 50 percent of the time. And according to many companies, it, this is the, the, one of the, the most uh, crucial bottlenecks 
for productionizing uh, machine learning models. Uh, so feature stores deal with this with this problem. And when we look at, uh, at, at, how, at how, what are feature stores and how do they do that, so here you can see a very simplistic uh, view where the feature store sits. So there is the raw data and there is the model, and in between there is the feature store. And uh, the model can be pr for pred predictions or for training. And between the, the raw data and the feature store, there is the feature engineering. And just that if, if anyone here is not familiar, features are just you know, a fancy way of saying data inputs for a machine learning engine to consume, okay? So if we have um, um, the, the year that I was born, okay, then uh, a transform feature would be um, in my age, okay? For instance, this is very simple. Or it could be the last transaction, so a transform feature could be the average uh, size of a transaction, okay? And the feature could be it, it could be a categorical uh, feature, like uh, maybe uh, uh, what, what nationality I am, okay? It could be a numerical, it could be an embedding, a vector embedding, a learned vector embedding from deep learning, machine learning model, and uh, it could be even an API, okay? And um, so, so this is where uh, the feature store, uh, uh, what the feature store is, and then you need to extract those features for model prediction and for training. And for real-time application, you need to extract those features very, very fast. So the challenges that feature store address is serving features for real-time prediction with low latency, and this is the most important a, a challenge uh, that feature store uh, address in terms of real-time applications. Without it, there isn't a real-time application, okay? It just isn't. And then the, the second uh, challenge, which is also very important, is avoiding training serving skew. What happens is that we, we train the model, we reach a level of accuracy, and when we deploy it to production, there is a, often a deterioration in the accuracy. So if we reach 95%, it could be 85%. Now, not all of it is because of, um, you know, the difference between training and serving, okay? Some of it is because the data is different, but, uh, but anything that has to do with, we, we transform differently the, the, the features during the training pipeline compared to how we did it in the serving pipeline, those slight difference is something that we want to address with the feature store. Then there is the issue of, if I developed a feature for one use case, then there shouldn't be a reason why another data scientist in my company should reinvent the wheel and develop, you know, uh, the same feature for his use case. Why not reshare features across use cases? So this is the third uh, aspect that the features are very important, and that helps solve the 80% time or the 66% time the data science spends on data management. And the fourth aspect of, uh, of uh, feature store, which is more recently, uh, recently added, is the monitoring data pipeline. So this is very important also for explainability, for observability, for regulations, for compliance, okay? And especially important for the fintech, for the financial uh, services domain. And because we are talking now about the challenges of deploying real-time AI application, we are focused on the first challenge, which is serving features of real-time predictions with low latency. So what do we mean by real-time, okay? So we mean that uh, the serving or the prediction will be uh, upon receiving uh, an online request. It could be as the customer is doing a search, or um, okay, as, as there is some kind of interaction with an application or website. It has to be not just timely, okay? It has to be based on live, fresh, real-time data. So not the data from last night batch processing, and not even from an hour ago. Live, fresh data. Imagine solving, uh, you know, identifying fraud detection uh, if it's the data of the last transaction size, the last three transactions, you know, from just 20 minutes ago, uh, compared to uh, something that happened uh, maybe five hours ago, or maybe just from the last few seconds. So live, fresh, real-time data and doing it extremely fast with a very low latency, okay? So measured usually in, in milliseconds, and this has to be done consistently, so think P99, okay? And as I said, over the, over the years we see that um, the use cases are becoming more and more real-time, so the response time is expected to be, you know, faster or the window is, is smaller. So if in the past I worked in a fraud detection company, then it was 10 years was uh, uh, um, 10 years ago. 24 hours was acceptable 
uh, and uh, batch processing uh, without any machine learning involved was also what we used to do. Then three, five years ago, we introduced machine learning and the window uh, 40 minutes and, uh, and, uh, and um, this became even smaller, you know, to 12 seconds and now it's 50 to 200 milliseconds. This is uh, basically the expectation and the, the reason is that you need to stop fraud as part of a transaction and a customer isn't going to wait uh, for the transaction uh, to be executed. He, he expects instant response. And if there is a problem with the, uh, the machine learning engine that is running in the background, okay, then either it will give a false positive or false negative, which is not good, you know, money is going to maybe lost, or there is going to be a, a bad customer experience because he didn't yet get his tr transaction approved or, or vice versa. So this is why it's so important um, to do it uh, consistently and in real time. Now, this end-to-end -end latency is made of a number of components, the network latency, the application pipeline, maybe it's the e-commerce uh, application, F serving the features, okay, extracting those features and feeding it to machine learning model and the model scoring, okay? So all of it has to be less than the end-to-end -end 200 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds, whatever the case is. And, uh, and this is very, very difficult. Uh, if we look at uh, the pipeline uh, for real-time AI ML, there are lots of places, a lot of the choices that we can make that affect uh, this end-to-end -end latency. So what are we using for the feature engineering, you know, from the streaming sources or from the batch sources? Uh, what, uh, what are we using for, uh, for, for the computation of, of the streaming? And for the feature serving, what, what method are we extracting those features? Are we using a Lambda function? Are we using an a HTTP server, a Python HTTP server? Are we using a Java gRPC server? For instance, our friends at Feast, the open source feature store that I told you, they found that there is a huge difference between using a Java gRPC server and an HTTP Python uh, uh, server. And, uh, uh, and while for data scientists it's much more convenient convenient for us to write in Python, Java and Go often will be uh, more, you know, faster, more, more efficient. So you need to, to, to check what, what is the best for your case. Also in the serving, uh, you know, the serving part, we can optimize. We can use hardware accelerators, GPUs, TPUs. Uh, what, what, what serving engine are we using? Maybe we can make the model smaller so it will be more efficient. But what, we've, what companies found that the most important component to optimize and the, the biggest source of bottleneck is the feature store and uh, the, 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 the store that stores those features or da data inputs for the machine mo learning model um, uh, for inference. And uh, this is why it's uh, implemented with an in-memory database compared to a disk-based database and often uh, for high scale or most often for high scale uh, or low latency use cases, Redis is, the, is the, the online feature store that is selected for those uh, feature store. And the reason for it is, is basically benchmark, benchmark, benchmarks. Uh, because it's such a critical component, companies bef before choosing their online feature store, they, they do thorough benchmarks, and sometimes they share those benchmarks with the community. And, uh, and this way we can also enjoy you know, for the benefit of their, you know, their benchmark and their work. And this is, where, this is a really a nice thing about the machine learning community in general. And uh, so you can see here benchmarks from Uber uh, and from DoorDash and from Feast Open Source and Tekton, the commercial uh, feature store. I'm not going to go on every single one of them, but the, the, and there are links to all the benchmarks. But the, I think the key takeaway is that Redis is by far the most uh, performance in terms of uh, throughput and latency. And not only that, it's the most cost effective. And I think this is something that isn't very intuitive to many people because memory is more expensive than disk. So how come Redis is, is more uh, cost effective compared to, let's say, DynamoDB here? Uh, uh, it's 14 times less expensive according to Tekton. Redis Enterprise compared to uh, DynamoDB is 14 times less expensive. At the same time, much faster. So the reason is that it's just a much better architecture uh, for it. And uh, um, here we have a, a cash app, block cash app. I don't know if you're familiar, familiar with it in, from the FinTech uh, 
a very, very successful uh, startup from the FinTech board. And they are, uh, this is just from a few months ago. They are, uh, it's a very good uh, talk. They are explaining how by moving from DynamoDB to Redis, they shifted the entire latency curve. So they went from 30 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds. And I, I encourage you to watch the, the video. You will see how every latency, every milliseconds of latency counts, you know, and anything that can be done to optimize is, is being done. And here's DoorDash, they explain how using Redis, they moved from different data structure uh, and by that they reduce the latency. So Redis isn't just a key value store, it's a key data structure store. Any data structure that you can think of, JSON, Craft, Dime series, uh, can be implemented with, with, uh, with Redis. So it's not just uh, improves the developer uh, experience, okay, developer productivity, it also has an effect, an impact on reducing cost, improving performance. So here they moved from a, a flat key value pairs to Redis hashes, and they improved the read latency and the memory pool footprint by 40%, and the uh, CPU efficiency by 5x. And this has, translates to money. And why is it important? The online feature store for high scale use cases can be more than 50% of the total cost of the, of, the, of the machine learning operations platform. So any savings you can do you know, with your feature store is really beneficial. If you have a few users, you know, and the use case isn't very successful, then it doesn't really matter. But for, for when those use, case, use cases become successful, and that's what usually happens, then the data sets become larger, the throughput, the, the number of, uh, of transactions per second, or reads per second, or queries per second, are, you know, go into the millions, and then the cost is much larger, and, and, and optimization is important. Now, up till now, I talked about Redis open source, okay, and Redis open, open source, 90% of or more of the organizations use Redis open source and they enjoy all this goodness. So if it's the, the scale, the, the low latency, high throughput, the persistency, okay, um, and uh, the different data types, uh, but, but so this is really good. But for telcos, for uh, uh, finance vertical, for governments, for healthcare, this isn't enough. We all know it's not enough. And also for other verticals when they become a very large scale, like the Gojek example that I gave you. When they were a startup, they could do with Redis uh, open source, but now that they are much bigger and much more successful, they don't want to manage the Redis clusters themselves. They move to Redis Enterprise. And another customer, the use case became so successful, they, don't, they wanted to save 50% of the cost. They went to Redis Enterprise. And another bank, uh, they wanted something to have five nine availability, three nine availability wasn't good enough. They wanted the security uh, and all the things that uh, Redis Enterprise can give. So they went with Redis Enterprise. Okay, so you, here you can see uh, what uh, uh, Redis Enterprise gives on top of Redis open source. And I think that it was mentioned earlier in the keynote, the importance of COSS, commercial open source uh, software. So. Uh, it's great, uh, open source is great, but being stuck with a, a great open source technology, but without 24 seven support, and uh, you know, waiting in the forums or stack overflows that somebody might respond, is not something that uh, is good for every company, okay? And uh, so all those extra, uh, um, you know, uh, layers that, that enterprise uh, need, are provided by uh, Redis Enterprise. Now, uh, I just want to focus at the, about reducing cost. So Redis on Flash is something that we see uh, often is used for very large uh, scale uh, feature stores, Be you know, in the uh, t uh, terabytes of data for, for the feature stores, because it uh, allows the, uh, to reduce the cost even further. All the benchmarks that I, s I showed you before are without Redis on Flash, but when you have your data, your feature store becomes even larger and larger, then you might want to uh, go with Redis on Flash. It's a tiered memory access, so the keys are in the DRAM, and, um, and the hot values are in the DRAM, in the memory, uh, but uh, the, the, warm, the warm values or the warm features are in the Flash. And uh, this way you can reduce substantially the cost, but without uh, impacting performance. And, and this is something that is in the expertise of Redis. It's very difficult to do. You know, we know other companies who tried to do it and didn't succeed. 
so, and this is something that uh, we see more and more uh, uh, feature stores for high scale uh, are using. Uh, up until now, I talked about the real-time aspect of a feature store. I want to just touch a little bit so you can understand why feature store is becoming such an important component regardless of uh, the online feature store. So if in the past, a feature store could have been just the online feature store without anything else, today we see a feature store has two uh, manifestations. One, the offline store, and one is the online store. And the offline store is used for training and for batch predictions. And they, um, the, before you saw the example of DoorDash, they used Snowflake for the offline store, but it could be Redshift, it could be Esri, it could be SQL Azure, it could be Google Big, BigQuery. And um, in the offline store, we, we, store hist we store historical data and static data. In the only online store, we store the latest data, okay? And uh, this is, as I said, the critical component. And on top of the storage and materialization layer where we store the features, there is the management and orchestration layer. And because of the management or orchestration layer, we can achieve uh, all these other uh, challenges that, that I mentioned earlier. So, so how do we avoid the training and serving skills, those little differences between how we define the training pipeline and the serving pipeline, is we define all these things in the registry on a logical level, so you don't have to translate from, from Python uh, to Java. It's all, it's all stored in the, on a logical level and on an abstract le level, and then you can, you can more uniformly uh, execute it for, uh, for the training and for the pipeline. Now, once the features and the transformation logic of the features is stored in the registry, okay, in the, in the, on the logical level in the, in the feature store, then it can be reused not just across training and production, it can also be used across another use case by the data scientist that created those features, but also by another data scientist in the organization, okay? So this is how we avoid uh, what, what we used to be the best practice up until a few years ago, that each data scientist in his own silo, uh, you know, creating features for his use cases and not even being aware that another data scientist in the organization is creating those same features. And even if he was aware, there wasn't really an easy way of just sharing features across uh, the organization. And finally, there is the monitoring uh, of the data pipelines. Uh, so how can we monitor? Um, for instance, we can uh, monitor for the volume. We can mono monitor for latency. So these are like the operational aspects. And we can, also mod, uh, we can also monitor the data science aspect in terms of accuracy. It's, for instance, uh, the distribution, the distribution of the data that is coming into the features, into the uh, feature store, and the, and the distributions of the features that are being served in predictions. If the, if the distribution changed, something happened, okay, maybe there is a concept with a data free, maybe another issue, we have to investigate, maybe we need to retrain, okay, or some other thing. And um, we also may need to make sure that the freshest data is being served to the feature store. So all of this we can monitor with the feature store, and not all feature stores have it yet. You know, this is like something more, it's more new. Now, why is it so important? In uh, AI, and especially for finance, is, uh, is going to be very uh, highly regulated. And there are lots of uh, new frameworks, regulations around AI, and specifically in finance, uh, the demand that there will be uh, a monitoring and, uh, and uh, logging and explainability and make sure there is no bias. Why? Because the finance, maybe for finance vertical, maybe more than any vertic vertical, any decision that an AI makes can have very a big impact for good or for bad on the people, okay? You can't get a loan, you can't get credit card. Uh, this is a, 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 this transaction is fraud and it's not, okay? So, uh, so this is why there is a, a demand, more and more demand for, you know, for, for uh, AI to be governed. And so this is the example of the EU AI Act. They define it's a risk-based approach. So high risk are applications that uh, banks do, underwriting of loans, fraud detection, transaction scoring, not just that, okay? It's not, they're not picking on finance, there are also others, but, but definitely those. Now, chatbots in banks, they will be under uh, low risk, and they, the only observability, if you start talking to a chatbot, 
that the chatbot would just say, hey, I'm a chatbot, I'm not real human, so that's it, just transparency, that's it. Uh, and then there is also Project FAIR, we are here in the UK, so I don't know if you're familiar with it, so Project FAIR is in partnership between HSBC and the Alan Turing Institute, and FAIR is a framework for responsible adoption uh, of AI uh, in finance, specifically in finance, I think it's very important, because the more we have such, uh, such initiatives specific to finance and, and more, more companies uh, will be involved more from the finance world. So the same is open source. It will, be, uh, it will serve everyone, right? Uh, and, I, and when we look at the feature store and what are the expected, this is just a draft, right? What are the ex expected the requirements? Um, then we can see that feature store really can help in every, almost every aspect of those uh, requirements. Now, um, I wanted to touch a little bit about case studies of, of uh, online uh, feature store with Redis and with Fist and, and Feather. So in general, when we look at, and on the left you can see uh, companies using Redis as the online feature store. Uh, most of them are not using open source feature store. Uh, they're not using commercial uh, feature store. They're using a do-it-yourself feature store. They develop their own feature store and they're using Redis as the online feature store. But this is changing. More and more companies are now adopting open source, and I expect that in the in the in the future, more and more companies, uh, smaller, you know, small medium enterprise will will adopt commercial open source feature stores. And Redis is it can you know often deployed in any of those cases. And when we look at um, at, at specifically at fintech companies, uh, then uh, I put dollar sign, okay next to the companies that are uh, from the fintech, and uh, there, is, uh, there are also two banks here that, uh, you know, banks are more, uh, more shy, okay, so I didn't put the logos, and, um, and which ones are using FIST, I put also here, you can see which ones are using FIST, the, the reason we don't have, have Feather is Feather is really uh, just a very new open source feature store, it's an old feature store at LinkedIn, but it's a newly open source feature store. And it now I think it has uh, just over 800 stars, and FIST has 3,000 stars, but it's going very, very fast. So I would follow further closely. They have some advantages that, that FIST doesn't have. Both are great open source feature stores. And here I, I wanted to focus a little bit about uh, use cases that are used for uh, specifically in the uh, banks and, uh, and, and financial services. So we have uh, um, online mortgages companies Better, which is you know, a very popular uh, um, company, uh, Cash App that we talked before of Block, um, the, a very large uh, bank, very, very large. And Robinhood, uh, which is also, I think, uh, commission-free stock trading is, is uh, also very well known. And you can just uh, give you an idea of the scale, okay? So onlinemarketersbetter.com, uh, um, they have almost a billion dollars in revenues. They grew 10x a year prior. I think this is really important. When we, we look, and Redis, we, we are in a vantage point to look at those uh, companies. They are growing very, very fast. They're using machine learning, and, and the fact that their online store grows very fast means that their, their, um, um, their machine learning uh, use case is very successful, okay? Uh, so they go uh, 10x a year prior. Uh, mobile payment service cash up of Block, what was called Square Up, uh, 70 million annual transacting users, uh, 1. billion gross profit. Now you might say, ah, compared to banks, this is nothing. But remember that this is just one service, okay? It's not all the service, and it's going very fast, right? And so a very, very large bank, I think top five, okay? And Robinhood, 30 million users, 2 billion of revenue. So all of them are using a real-time AI at scale, okay, and uh, very successfully. And they're using an on online feature store Redis, and, and two of them are using Fist, uh, for the open source, uh, the feature store. The, it's not a do-it-yourself feature store. Now, the, the bank specifically here, you can see that it, it says enterprise. It means that they are using Redis Enterprise. Sometimes companies start with Redis open source, they outgrow Redis open source, and then they go to Redis Enterprise, like the case of Gojek. Uh, and, and sometimes they go directly uh, to Redis Enterprise, let's say from a, a slow disk-based a database like DynamoDB in the case of this very large bank or 
for, you know, uh, just, you know, from nowhere. Just, they just, you know, have a use case and they're looking for the best option, the best of breed option. Uh, so these are real-time high-scale use cases. Uh, here, uh, there are links, and, uh, and I'm also going to share all the, all the links in the recording on YouTube, okay? Um, um, so, but you can see here uh, in the architecture that uh, the, of the, the data sources are many, many data sources to the feature store form. There are several offline feature stores, uh, streaming st and several streaming sources, and they're using uh, TTL, uh, Time to Live, of which is a native uh, Redis uh, capability, uh, to make sure that the, the, the streaming features that, that populate the online feature store don't just clog it, you know, just, and, 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 and they will just expire after uh, 24 hours or 48 hours. This is a lead scoring uh, um, uh, use case, okay, um, and um, and st and feast f streaming streaming sources are supported for uh, for feast only for Redis, and it's very important. And he, he explained to it very well why st streaming is important. I encourage you to look at it. Then cash up again. There is a source of it. I already talked about it. How they shifted the latency curve by moving away from DynamoDB. And this is for personalized search and recommendation. And then we have uh, Robinhood using uh, for fraud detection. And uh, Robinhood are calling uh, their feature store Beast, not Fist, Beast. Not because it's a monster, but because it's a built, built, I guess it was an internal joke, but it's built with Fist. And, and, and they explain very nicely how for some things, a fist is great, and they adopted it. For some things, uh, uh, they didn't like how fist was implemented. They didn't take it. Some things, fist was missing. For instance, it, a transformation logic and, and actually executing those transformation, the feature engineering, can't be done today in fist. Tomorrow, maybe, but not today. In feather, you can do. Apropos, I told you I will tell you that there are some advantages of feather. Feather is more, more. It wasn't open source in, in the beginning of 2019. It was open source today. So. It, may, it managed to do much more uh, improvements along the, along the time. And uh, they're using here Hive as the off offline store, so offline store can be many options. Uh, and here the bank, they are, it explains uh, again why they moved away from MongoDB to Redis, you know, to improve the latency, to reduce cost, and you can see here the architecture. And they're using um, a Redis Enterprise for fraud detection and balance forecasting, and it's you know it's very it was very interesting to listen to the customer because it's, uh, the way he was talking about fraud detection and the way he was talking about balance forecasting. So you have to not all use cases are alike, and fraud detection is a very mission critical, and uh, it always is very important. You know, five line availability is active, active, everything, nothing lost. Uh, balance forecasting is also very important. This is. How many? What? What is the reserves in terms of frequent flyer miles of the credit cards uh, to to keep and you know not to have too much but not to have too little uh, is important. But but it doesn't directly affect the customer. So when any, anything that affects directly the customer, it's it's very important that it's airtight everything. And uh, one of the reasons uh, you know coming to Redis Enterprise. Now here I, I'm going to point you to a few links and to, for tutorials and resources, how you can get started with Fist and Feather. Both of them are deployed on Azure also, integrated into data uh, and AI ecosystem of, of Azure. So it's very convenient. If you're already using uh, Azure, then you, you can use, uh, you can use uh, Feather or, or Fist on Azure with Redis, with enterprise tiers, okay? So the, uh, the, uh, Microsoft did you know, a wonderful job in it. I told you the difference between uh, Feather and Fist, the main difference is the transformation logic and the feature engineering. And uh, so I'm going to share a few uh, uh, links and resources. So for uh, Fist, uh, because everything is open source, you know, the, the Fist, Feather, Redis, then uh, if it was Zoom, I would say 10 minutes after this talk, but we are all in uh, London, so when you get home, Wait, you know, say hi to your kids and family, and then you can just start playing around with the uh, Fist and, and Redis or Feather. And so we created a tutorial. Some people prefer to use the uh, Colab, so it's also available in Colab. And, and you could just, you know, see what, what, what is a feature store is all about and what is Fist is all about. But 
generally, if you want to get mo more familiar with the concept of, uh, of feature store, I think this is a very nice way to do it. And then you can see, okay, it meets my requirements, it doesn't meet my requirement, but it's very easy to do it. Um, and uh, this is a fist deployed on uh, Azure, you know, the, uh, the, uh, into the, the AI and data ecosystem, the, the Azure uh, platform. Um, you can enjoy the enterprise tiers uh, of Redis by uh, including Redis on Flash. It's called on Microsoft. It, it's called Enterprise Flash tier. So all the goodness that we just talked about is available on Azure. Okay, and uh, there is a, here also a link to a tutorial uh, specifically for Fist on Azure. So you can also do that. And um, and then there is Feather. So Fist is much more lightweight. Okay. So it has, so even if uh, uh, it, it's, it's it, like if you were a small startup and there is only one data scientist, I would say go for this, check it out, because it's so lightweight. Uh, uh, Feather is a more robust uh, feature, feature, feature store, but still there are great tutorials. There is a Slack channel for both Fist and Feather, and I shared before the Fist one, this is the Feather one. And again, there is a very uh, nice quick start guide uh, how to start with uh, Feather on Azure. There is a, a very active Slack that if you have any, any issues, you can just post your you know, comment there and uh, everyone will be happy to assist. And uh, so, the last slide, okay. Always hate the end on a high note. So this is, uh, also before was a high note. Okay, so uh, this is uh, from the survey, Fino survey. Uh, and they asked, uh, what, they asked customers, what is the most beneficial area for open source engagement in finance, specifically in finance? And the answer was, drum rolls, okay, the answer was that AI ML is number three. So, you know, I'm very happy about it. Uh, it means that there is a bright future for open source in AI ML in finance. And as good as it is to consume open source, right? I just told you great ways of how you can consume Redis, as online store, Feast, and, and Feather. I think it's also very nice and very gratifying uh, to contribute back. So for instance, uh, Fist had an issue with uh, the flow, the real-time flow, and even though it wasn't related to the integration with Redis, because we are, you know, we know all, everything about real-time, we, imp we helped Fist improve uh, uh, the core, you know, uh, uh, by 30%, okay? This is our expertise. Now your expertise is finance, and I'm sure that you will see that Fist and Feather is lacking in specific ways that are important for the finance domain. And so instead of just developing it for, your, for yourself, you can develop it for yourself and then contribute it back, and everyone will benefit. Now, if everyone does it, okay, if anyone does it, then, then finance will move forward in the same rate as AI and machine learning will move forward, right? So I think this is, uh, open source is great, of course, you have to do it uh, carefully and, and securely, and uh, I, talk, I, I explained how Redis Enterprise can help, and I think also a partner like Azure, and Fist and Feather is available in Azure, is also a great way of reducing risk, and uh, that's it. So I look forward to seeing your contributions. Thank you very much.